Okay, hello and welcome to my presentation. My name is Nicholas Darcy Marr and I'm a student at UCLA. And today I'm talking about reusing public data in the bioinformatics community. So in bioinformatics, we use high throughput data and we can call this data omics data. And it represents a bunch of different types of technologies and has different biological meanings. And this data is large and we store it online in repositories. So the two repositories that we focus on for this project are the Sequence Read Archive and the Gene Expression Omnibus. And both of these are run by NCBI. And the main difference between them is that the Sequence Read Archive has a lot more raw sequence data while the Gene Expression Omnibus has more expression data and metadata and things that have already been processed a little bit. And both of these repositories are very large and have hundreds of thousands of studies and millions of samples. And so they represent a large opportunity for scientific discovery. And then in this project, we also talk about two different kinds of publications. So a primary analysis paper would be a paper that generated their own sequence data and created original data and uploaded it to one of these repositories. And then a secondary analysis paper would be one that got their data by reusing and downloading a data set that another group had uploaded from one of these repositories and then using it for their project. So we know that there are papers out there that do secondary analysis, but we don't know what the scale of it is. And we have yet to quantify the amount of secondary analysis that goes on in the research community. So we were able to quantify that in this project by matching up papers to their associated data sets, whether they reuse the data or generated, them, generated it themselves. And we did that by parsing the text of the papers for the unique accession numbers that match to data sets in SRA and GEO. So if we look at 100% of the papers that mention SRA and 100% of the papers that mention GEO, we can see that in GEO, those, there is a higher proportion of papers that are doing secondary analysis than in SRA. And we can look at that trend over time and we see that in GEO, there's an increasing amount of secondary analysis, which actually exceeded the amount of primary analysis in 2016 and has increased since then. So now there are more papers doing secondary analysis that mention GEO than those doing primary analysis that mention GEO. And in SRA, it's been a pretty constant rate of secondary analysis, around 30%. We can also look at the data sets themselves and not just the papers that they're in. And here we're looking at every data set that was reused at all and how many times it was reused. So in this distribution, we see that the GEO data sets are, tend to be reused more times than the SRA data sets. And they also have a bunch of these outlier points or what we can call superstar data sets that um, are reused hundreds or up to a thousand, over a thousand times. And one example of one of these superstars would be some data sets with breast cancer patients. And that is, that makes sense to us because that is a highly studied disease. We can also look at the species of data sets and compare reusability there. So here we're seeing that human data sets are reused significantly more times than non-human data sets. And uh, that can be observed in both GEO and SRA, but there's a bigger difference uh, in GEO. So finally, what we can say is that we know that the data sets in GEO tend to be more reusable than the data sets in SRA. And we can speculate that that would be because of the type of information that's stored. And then we also want to just mention the main message of this project, which is that secondary analysis should be taken seriously and it saves a lot of resources um, from primary analysis and can still make those scientific discoveries. And that is it for today. Thank you.